like to say good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. Our first selection this morning is I woke up this morning with my mind on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind on Jesus. <clears throat> Ready? Let us sing. I woke up this morning with my mind saying on oh, Jesus. I woke up this morning with my with my mind stand on the Lord's head. I woke up this morning with my mind. It stand on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And I sing it and pray it with my mind. It was stand on Jesus. I'll keep singing and praying with my mind. Stand on the Lord. I'll keep singing and praying with my mind. While stand on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And I'll keep walking and talking with my mind. While stand on Jesus. I'll keep walking and talking with my mind while sin on the Lord. And I'll keep walking and talking with my mind while it stand on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And I woke up this morning with my, with my mind stand on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my, with my mind stand on the Lord. And I woke up this morning with my, with my mind stand on Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We trust that your mind is fastened, fixed, stayed on Jesus that the thoughts and the intents of your heart are those that want to worship and serve God. Those of you joining with us on social media, we appreciate your attendance this morning, and we encourage you to visit with us in person at your earliest opportunity. I know some may be, may be online a distance away, and that may not be possible, but we're certainly glad to have you on board. We're glad to see all of you here this morning as we uh, lift up our voices and sing and praise God together. Let's always be mindful that the, the blessings and the grace that we enjoy each day are gifts from God. And that without them we would be, we would be nothing. <clears throat> we have a card from Sister, uh, Sister Orion's and expressing her appreciation for all the prayers and the, and, and the consideration that uh, was extended her way uh, during her recent illness. It says, for all the prayers and the thoughtfulness for your uh, for my recovery, uh, and yours all, always your sister in Christ, uh, Sister Martha Ryans. Let's keep her in, 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 uh, in our prayers as she continues to recover. Um, and also keep in mind, uh, Brother Randy, uh, Randy Stokes, who is going in for surgery on, uh, on tomorrow. Uh, and, and as well as others who are suffering, who are facing illness, as well as loss of loved ones. Let's keep in mind the, uh, the women's prayer line, the sister's prayer line on Monday, as well as Tuesday night, the national prayer line, as well as the local Best of Congregation prayer line. Uh, those of you who have not participated in that, we encourage you to, to, to make that, avail that to your, uh, at your earliest convenience. 
leadership meeting is on next Sunday. Uh, it's at 9 o'clock. We encourage brothers, if you would, come out at 9 o'clock so we can uh, t talk about the things that are coming up and also plan for any future events and activities. This morning as we worship, Brother Bray will continue to lead us in song. Uh, I have the announcements. If there are anything that you, you need to share with the congregation, please um, make that known to us before the end of the service. If you're online and you need request prayer or any announcements that is pertinent to this congregation, uh, please send those in through our private messages and we will announce those as well. Brother Travis Head will lead our, our read our scripture at the appropriate time, and this morning's prayer will be offered by Brother Wallace, and Brother Bill will deliver our message. So I'll just join in, and let's continue to sing as we praise God together. Our next election is Trouble in My Way. I sing it a little bit different from what you may be accustomed to, but we'll get to the same results. We'll have a little fun singing the song. Trouble in my way. Ready? Let us sing. Trouble in my way. I'll have to cry sometime. Trouble in my way. I'll have to cry sometime. I'll lay awake at night. But that's all right. Don't you know that my Jesus, he'll fix it after a while. Who trouble in my home, I'll have to moan sometime. Trouble in my home. I have to moan sometime. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. Don't you know that my Jesus, he'll fix it after a while. Trouble in the church. I'll have to pray sometime. Trouble in the church. I'll have to pray sometime. I'll lay awake in the night. But that's all right. Don't you know that my Jesus? He is the Almighty Jesus. My, 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 my Jesus. He'll fix it after a while. Trouble in my way. I'll have to cry sometime. Trouble in my way. I'll have to cry sometime. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. Don't you know that my Jesus, He is the Almighty Jesus. Don't you know that my Jesus, my, 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 my Jesus, he'll fix it after a while, after a while. Our next selection before scripture reading and prayer is the song All Alone. All Alone. We'll sing verses one of this song, All Alone. Ready? Let us sing. On Mount Olive, sacred brow, Jesus spent a night in prayer. He's the pattern for us all, all alone. 
if we only steal away in some portion of the day we will find it always be to be alone and there are days i like to be all alone with christ my lord i can tell him of my troubles all alone days I like to be all along with Christ my Lord I can tell him of my troubles all along and there are days I like to be all along with Christ my Lord I can tell him of my troubles all alone. There are days I like to be all alone with Christ, my Lord. I can tell him of my troubles all alone. Good morning, church. This morning's scripture will be taken from Romans chapter 1, verses 14 through 18. Romans chapter 1, verses 14 through 18. And if we all have it, let us begin. And it reads, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. I read to you Romans chapter 1, verses 14 through 18. May the Lord have a blessing upon the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. Good morning, Bessemer. Good morning online. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to see another day, another day that we've never seen before, nor have we known that we will see it again, oh Lord. Father, we come to you right now, head bowed and eyes closed, hearts open. Father, we ask that you uplift the preacher as he comes forth to bring forth the bread of life. And Father, we ask that you bring a ready recollection to his mind, to the things that he has studied. Father, we ask you this morning that you bless us. Bless us, O oh Lord, not that we've been so good or that we deserve it, O oh Lord, but it's all about who you are. Father, we ask that give us the strength to lift your son up so that you can draw all men unto you, O oh Lord. Father, this morning we ask that you wrap your arms around the sick and the shut-in. Father, we know that there's some that want to be here, but they couldn't be here. Father, we ask that you bring healing to the broken hearts. Father, we know you to be a healer this morning. Father, we know that we know you to be a lawyer in the courtroom, O oh Lord. Father, we ask that you step into this city. Father, we ask that you step in the midst and stop all the killing. Stop all the drugs. Stop all the, 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 the sinning that's going on, Lord. Father, we know that you can step in when you get ready. Father, we may not know the future, but Lord, we know that you hold the future in, your, in the palm of your hand, O oh Lord. 
Father, we ask this morning that you guide us going forward. And Lord, we ask that, you, that we do things that, to please you. Let the meditation of our hearts and the words of our mouth be uh, pleasing to your sight, O oh Lord. And Father, at lastly, we ask that you forgive us for where we fail you. Father, you know that our sins are many, and we are but dust, but Lord, thank you. Thank you for the blood of Christ this morning. Thank you for you sending him down here to reconcile us unto yourself, O oh Lord. Father, we ask all these things, and that's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next selection is Humble Yourself in the Sight of the Lord. This is a repeat song, so the bass and the uh, tenors will sing the first part, and the altos and tenors will sing uh, the exact same thing, but as a repeat to the second part of that, that the verses. Humble Yourself in the Sight of the Lord. Ready? Let us sing. Humble Yourself in the Sight of the Lord. So humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up, and he will lift you up. If Jesus is the Son of God, Yes, Jesus is the Son of God, and he, he died for us, and he, he died for us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, that saved a wretch like me. When we've been there 10,000 years, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, bright shining as the sun. So humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. So humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up, and he will lift you up. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. And I love to praise him. You know that I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise him. I love to praise him, and I love to praise him. You know that I love to praise his holy name. He's my rock, my rock, my my sword and shield, he's my will. In the middle, in the middle of the will, I know he'll never, he'll never, never let me down. He's just a jewel that I have found. Church, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You know I love to praise his name. Church sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said I love to praise his name. Church sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know I love to praise him. You know that I love to praise his holy name. He's my rock. He's my, rock. my rock, my rock. And he's my will. He's my in the middle, in the middle of the will. I know he'll never. He'll never, never let me down. He's just a jewel that I have found. Church, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know I love to praise his name. Church, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know I love to praise his name. Church, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know I love to praise him. You know that I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. And I love to praise him. You know that I love to praise his holy name. He's my rock, my rock, my rock, my sword and shield. He's the wheel, he's the in the middle, in the middle of the wheel, I know he'll never, he'll never, never let me down. He's such a jewel that I have found. Church, seek, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Church, seek, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know I love to praise him. Church sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know I love to praise his name. You know that I love to in the morning I love to praise in the evening. I love to praise his holy name. The song before the message is, Oh, I want to see him. Oh, I want to see him. Ready? Let us sing. As I journey through this land, I am singing. As I go, I am pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. And many arrows pierce my soul from without within. But my Lord, he will go me on and through him I must win. And that's why, oh, I want to see him look upon his face you know we'll be there to see forever of his saving grace i'm on the streets of glory let me lift up my voice you know all cares are We'll be home at last, ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to him. He will give me light. Lord, and Satan's snares may vex my soul, turn 
my thoughts aside, but my he will go ahead. He leads wherever he tied. And that's why, oh, I want to see him look upon his face. You know we'll be there to see forever of his saving grace. I'm on the streets of glory, let me lift up my voice, you know all cares of will be home and last ever to rejoice, when before me billows rise, from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my bark. He does safely keep and he leads me gently all through this world below. I know that he's a, he's a friend to me and no I love him so and that's why oh I want to see him look upon his face you know we'll be there to sing forever of his saving grace I'm on the streets of glory. Let me lift up my voice. You know all cares are. We'll be home at last, ever to rejoice. And that's why, oh, I want to see him look upon his face you know we'll be there to sing forever of his saving grace where we'll are on the streets of glory let me lift up my voice you know all cares are We'll be home at last, ever to rejoice. Let the church say amen. amen. Brother Bray was singing that song about seeing Jesus. And I thought about when Thomas said, unless I see the, the hole in his hands, and I put my finger in his side, I won't believe. And I said, man, when he seen Jesus, I probably just passed out, amen. To know that our Savior is alive and he sits at the right hand of God. And, and because I know that, I know everything's going to be all right. Uh, we're going to go through some things in this world, but everything's going to be all right. Because uh, Jesus said, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. And I'm, I'm banking on that, amen. I don't know what y'all said when y'all got up this morning. But I just said thank you. All I said was, was thank you, Lord, for seeing another day. And this is a day that we're going to worship you indeed in spirit and in truth. I start hollering through the house. Everybody get up. Everybody get up. It's time to go to, to worship uh, the Lord. He's been good to us. I was telling my son, I know he just sings, the Lord been good to us. He said, okay, Dad. He been good to us. Yeah, yeah, he's going to hit it all his days. I said, it's by his grace that we have done the things that we have done. And his grace is the only thing that he might not understand it fully right now. But he's going to say, Dad, I've been saying this all my days. And I won't stop saying it until I'm, I'm finished breathing, amen. Because I know it's by the grace of God that's keeping us, that's indeed sustaining us, taking care of us. I want to thank all the church for, for praying for us on our safe travels. I feel like we've been gone a little too long. And uh, I know we spent too much money. I know that's for a fact. But uh, I thank God for letting us have it, amen. 
And uh, I just thank for those, thank for those who kept us in prayer. Um, and I've been, you know, over this summertime, and we're praying for those who have been in travel. And we're also praying for those who are returning back to school. Uh, um, we, we say pray for the kids. I say pray for the teachers. Uh, you know, we pray for, are we praying for you, Brother Brown? We understand. We know you know you're a teacher. Uh, we pray for the teachers. I mean, are they entrusted with the babies and stuff like that? And then we pray for the students and the parents that we have a good year um, and a safe year. Um, everybody mind ain't right out there. So let's pray for a safe year uh, and that we get through this school year and it be a blessed year for indeed for many. This morning, we're going to continue on what we've been doing. Um, Brother Cass has been preaching to the family. Had me becoming a better husband, I think. Um, appreciate those lessons, and I've been thinking about a lot of things. That my prayer life is different now. Um, off the last sermon that Brother Cass preached, um, Brother Brown helping us out with, with application of Christianity and the principles of things. And you look at things totally different. A lot of it about being responsible, ain't it, Brother, 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 Brother Brown? Responsible and accountable. These things help us out with our life. See, the preacher needs preaching to too sometimes. And therefore, you know, I, I, I take heed. I hope we're all taking heed to the things that they have been saying and looking at our Bible to help us guide in our life. I've been doing the most evangelistic work, um, trying to save souls and get people close to Jesus. This morning, we look at Romans chapter number 1 and verse 14 through verse number 17. 18, that, that took us a little too, too far, Brother Travis. And I, and I should have took it off, but to 17. But it's a good, good preaching in that, though. Romans chapter 1, verse 14 to 17. If you're visiting with us, you are indeed our honor guest. Anything that we say inside the churches of Christ, you have a right to ask questions and scrutinize. I had a lot of questions. And Brother Cass um, helped me and answered a lot of questions, as, along with other those who are members of the body of Christ. But we give a Bible answer for indeed a Bible question. And we want people to just follow the Bible. And that leads us into the salvation truth. Romans chapter 1 verse 14 through 17. The Bible reads, For I am a debtor both to the Greek and to the barbarian, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. This morning my, my message is entitled, Is There Any Love for the Gospel? Is There Any Love? For the gospel. To love something. Or to love someone. It takes reason. I don't think nobody just loves somebody. Without a reason. There has to be a reason to keep someone in love. With something or someone. Then there is the reason that we don't love. I don't think we love everything. And there's a reason that we don't love everything. What does love come with, Brother Bell? Love comes with responsibility. Um, I want y'all to write that down. Love comes with, with responsibility. That when somebody is, uh, say they are in love with something, that means that they are concerned with the interests of that which they love. If they are not in love with something or someone, they are not concerned or not interested, interested in that thing or the person. Amen? Everybody okay with that this morning? We're talking about, is there any love for the gospel? When we say we love the gospel, we're saying that we are interested in everything of the gospel's concern. We are willing to even be responsible 
for the purpose of the gospel. Amen. When we say we don't love the gospel, we're saying that we are not concerned with the gospel or the reason for the gospel. In other words, if you are not concerned with the gospel in itself, that means you do not love the gospel and therefore you are we are relieved of responsibility. But once they I love the gospel, they're saying that I'm willing to be concerned and responsible for the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel, um, by definition, the Greek term um, euangelion, euangelion is the gospel, and the gospel is glad tidings. We, we are accustomed to saying in the English terms, I'm the good news. And it is the salvation through Christ. The proclamation of the grace of God manifested and pledged in Christ. The euangelion. It is indeed the good news. It is the proclamation of the grace of God manifested to the pledge in Christ. In other words, God through Christ has openly bestowed his grace to the world. God through Christ, he has openly bestowed his grace to the world. I love in Acts chapter number 26 and verse number 26, the latter part of that, the apostle Paul is giving his testimony into his conversion. And Festus has brought him before King Agrippa. And in Acts 22, 26 and verse 26, Paul lays out at the end of that conclusion. He says, for the king, he knows the things I'm talking about. It ain't like he don't know the prophecy of old. It ain't like he know what um, our people have believed or the Jews have been waiting on for many years. He said, before also I speak freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from the king. He said, everybody understand what has happened for this thing was not done in a corner. It ain't like nobody don't know what happened to Jesus Christ. What God did, he didn't do it in a corner, church. God did it openly before everybody. Boy, they hung him on a cross high. He said, if I be lifted up, I'm going to draw all men unto me. God didn't do it and did it in secret. He did it openly. What is the gospel? What is the euangelion? It is God proclaiming clearly his grace to mankind through his son, Jesus Christ. I had a long conversation um, with, um, with, 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 with a Muslim friend of mine and he was saying um, why you keep saying I got to go through Jesus Christ I said because he died for our sins I said and it, it, he just didn't die God proved he was the anointed one when he got up from the grave I said the reason brother Bell could not be a Muslim is because y'all don't believe that he was physically resurrected from the grave I said, now God confirmed it, who Jesus was. See, Jesus could have just died and we could have said all our sins been forgiven. And it probably have been a mystery, was he really the Christ? God confirmed it on that first day of the week. God confirmed it when the angels rolled the stone away. God confirmed it when they ran out and looked in and the angels said, he is not him. Yeah, it's been confirmed. Because the resurrection, it proved who Jesus was. When you read the book of Romans, you read into people that have obeyed the gospel, both Jew and Greek. But you're reading not to the first audience, but you're reading to another audience um, um, that Paul writes his letter to. Because the church was established from those that had listened to the gospel message, particularly in Acts 2. We look at Acts 2 in verse number 9 through 11. 
when, when, when the Holy Spirit came down upon the apostles and they spoke in tongues and then there was, there, there was Parthians, there was Medes, there was Elamites, there was uh, dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Liberia, Cyrene, and there were strangers of Rome, Jews, proselytes, Greeks, and Arabians. He said, do we hear them speak in tongues the wonderful works of God? Tongues ain't a mystical language. It's a known language to these people. Yeah. Ain't no jibbity jibbity ha ha. No. It is a known language and the Roman can hear. Through the miraculous gift of the Holy Spirit, unlearned men can speak to people in their known language. And these people, some of them, obeyed the gospel, went back and started the house churches in Rome. Everybody good with that? But something happened in A.D. 45. The Caesar at the time, I'm Claudius Caesar, did not like Jews in Rome. I want y'all to listen. This is, a, this is a very important part as you read the book of Rome. He did not like Jews. Jews caused a disturbance in Rome. So what did he do as being the emperor? He kicked the Jews out. Exiled the Jews. Now he can't tell the difference, Sister Kiva, between a Jew and a Jew Christian. He can't tell the difference. So he kicked all of them out. All of them was expelled from this AD 45. But yet it's still down the line, uh, by 50, AD 54, he died. And the people started coming back to Rome. Look at your Bible, Acts 18 and verse 1 and 2. Acts 18 and verse 1 and 2. Bro, Brad explained explain to people that the Bible is a history, historical fact. I said, they said, well, I don't believe in the Bible. I said, well, you believe in Claudius Caesar. I can show you where you're in the book. Now, if you believe that, then we can read the rest of it. We'll see Jesus is true too. Because in Acts chapter 1 and verse number, we understand people now by the name of Priscilla and Aquila. Anybody heard of them before? Because the Bible says after these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. Uh, verse 2 said that he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, later uh, from Italy, and his wife, Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews from depart from Rome. Yeah, that's a historical fact. So he kicked all the Jews out. But they went everywhere. You got people that were Jews that went about talking about, you know, I'm a Christian, but I still believe in the law of Moses. You had Gentiles where it was said, why well, we need the law of Moses? And now they're coming back. Everybody good with that? they coming back, and Paul is excited about AD 57. Write that down. AD 57, Paul pins this letter. And he said, man, I done heard about y'all in Rome. I want to get to y'all in Rome. Man, I want to clarify things for y'all in Rome. Man, y'all are the center of the world. Boy, we can get Rome right. You know how it's like y'all like, we get New York City right. Tokyo, Japan, we can get L.A. right. We can get Birmingham right, amen, you know. We can get something. We can get them right. We can get the country right. We can get y'all right. Well, he wanted to get to Rome real bad, amen? Because he describes them in, in Romans 1 and verse number 6 and 7 as the same thing all Christians are described for those who belong to Jesus. We talked about this last week when what the church was. And who are they? They are the what? They are the called out. He said, among whom ye also, you are the call of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace of our, of our God, our Father, and our Lord, Jesus Christ. I know everybody at Rome do what they want to do, but y'all been obedient to God. Y'all got the peace of God. Y'all are the saints of God. Y'all are the call of Jesus Christ. And if you are the call of Jesus Christ, you are his church. The church at Rome ain't written to people, everybody in Rome. Man asked me the other day, he said, now why would he write a book to those Romans, they don't care nothing about God. I said, you must miss the first part. Of it. They are the called of Jesus Christ. That's who he's writing to. He's not writing to everybody. He's writing to that, that, that set-apart group inside of 
Rome. Paul desired to come to Rome, this place that considered the, 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 the center of the world to bring these spiritual gifts to help educate. What do you do when you educate? You explain it and you explain how to live by it. You explain it and you explain how to live by it. See, Paul was just going to go and preach the gospel message. He was going to explain the purpose of the gospel and then tell him what church how to live by. Preacher always telling me how to live. Huh? What are you supposed to do? He can't just explain the gospel to you and then not explain how to live by it. But Bear's always trying to tell him what to do. But Bear's just explaining the gospel to you and then explaining how you should live by it. You grown, do what you want to do. But if you sit up under my teaching, Brother Cass teaching, Brother Brown teaching, they ain't going to tell you how to live. Because they, that's their mission of the gospel. Explain it and tell you how to live by it. When you read the book of Romans, um, it's going to explain it and tell you how to live by it. Colossians is going to explain it. Tell you how to live by it. Book of Thessalonians, both of them, going to explain it. Tell you how to live by it. All we're doing is just a, a reciting What's already been written, amen? So Paul, in his busy, busy schedule, he's been everywhere doing the things that are necessary for the gospel. That's how you get verse 14. Paul's great desire to come and exp explain the gospel and tell now how to live by both Jew and Greek. He said, now listen now, I, I want to come to y'all. I'm a debtor to the Greek and to the barbarian, to the wise and the unwise. Man, I got to preach this thing to everybody. It don't care about your status. It don't care about where you from, how you look, what your tongue is. I am in debt to you. Boys, the church can understand that we are sometimes in debt to uncomfortable situations. We are de in debt to people that may not look like us and may not have our same values, may not even think like us. The church can only grow when it has a mindset that I am a debtor to the whole world. I'm debtor to the whole world. So therefore, Paul is saying, for so much as in me is, I don't even know the correct English or not, for so much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. I'm ready to proclaim and explain. Everybody good with that? If you're going to proclaim it, you need to do what, church? Explain it. And when you explain it, you need to explain it right. Don't be adding to it. Uh, don't, don't, don't mess up the gospel now. Don't tamper with it. Um, um, give, me wrong, give me Galatians 1 and verse number 6. I want y'all to see this in the Bible. It's, it's, it's very um, important for those who believe the gospel message that the gospel message is a sensitive message. Um, and, and, and it is nothing to be Mess with, amen. Romans chapter one, I mean, Galatians chapter one, verse six. The Bible says, What I marvel that he said, you, Paul that, said, I marvel that you are so soon removed, that you are so soon removed from him that called you, from him that called you into the grace of Christ, into the grace of Christ, unto another gospel, unto a, another gospel. Keep going, which is not another, which is not another. But there be some, but there be some that trouble you, that trouble you, and would pervert, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Man, that, that word pervert, that word means to tamper with some innocent. Now we know it's out of our society, society, when people mess with little children, we say they are perverts, yeah. because you are messing with something that is what church yes. innocent. When people mess with the gospel. You can call them a pervert because they are messing with something that is innocent, that needs no addition, don't need no subtraction. It is per, leave it alone. Everybody good with that? Everybody good with that? Everybody good with that? So proclaiming this gospel message is proclaiming this grace of God is manifested and the pledge is in Christ Jesus. Everybody good with that? Is there any love for the gospel? My first point is my first point is this: the gospel changes identities. The gospel changes identities. People have to understand that Paul penned this letter for a purpose. He penned this letter for a purpose, and the introduction give us the theme of the mindset of Paul as he does this. Roman one and verse number sixteen. 
Because when we see this, we, we have seen this verse many, many times out of the body of Christ. He said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Why does Paul start off with that? Remember now the historical fact. Now people had been exiled and now they coming back up under Nero. He don't like Christians either. And therefore the gospel message is not popular. But while I was hitting on this in his class, it's not popular whatsoever. The book of Corinthians said that the preaching of the cross is the foolishness of him that perish foolishness. People looked at it as a foolish message. It was unpopular at that time. And I believe the pure gospel is still unpopular in this time. The pure gospel is unpopular even in this time. Paul is saying that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Paul used this word ashamed. Paul understanding the dilemma in Rome and caring nothing about the dilemma. When I come to y'all, I'm going to explain what the gospel is and how to live by it. Don't matter if people shun us. Don't matter if the whole entire Roman providence cares nothing about us and we are considered nothing in everybody's eyesight and, 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 and they have a meaningless faith. Paul, I ain't ashamed of that. What does the word shame mean? The word shame, I, I got this in, in my notes. I want y'all to get this down for your notes. The word shame um, means the painful feeling arising from the conscious of something that is dishonorable, improper, or embarrassing. Embarrassing. When we think about the gospel message, Paul used the word, I am not ashamed, saying that there is a feeling that may come with proclaiming the gospel and living by it. inside of society it may bring shame but Paul saying guess what church I am not ashamed I'm not I'm not I'm not ashamed because when one is shame it brings a term called unrequited love unrequited love unrequited love is when love is only one side now, God had displayed his love towards us through the gospel. That means accepting it and living by it. We show our love back to God. Watch this. Watch this for an example. Everybody in here know Brother Bell, though. Y'all should know me. If y'all see me in the streets and y'all say, Brother Bell, Brother Bell, Brother Bell, Brother Bell, and I look at you and turn my head, you're going to be like, why bro Bear acting like that? Towards me. We supposed to love one another. Now, your whole expression to call my name was out of what, church? Love. But if I looked at you and, and turned my head, you would say, what, you ain't got no love? For me, that means love now is not being displayed back. Amen? When we understand unrequited Love, it results in a shame. One may go on to say, I seen Brother Bell, but he had like he was shame of me. Everybody good with that? I seen my sister. I called my sister name, but she act like she was shame of me. Think about the Christians in this time as they try to be um, live according to the gospel. Then therefore society looked at them kind of differently and it brought about a lot of shame. Yeah, 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 yeah. It brought about sometimes being embarrassed. Consider maybe like Sister, Sister, uh, Sister uh, uh, Prince was talking about maybe improper. It may, may even seem dishonorable in some people's sight. Uh, um, he can't hang with us. Uh, 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 she can't run with us. Um, no more. I think Peter spoke about that in verse Peter four. That they think it's strange, it's improper, and therefore sometimes church. When I was when I was young in the gospel, uh, uh, and you felt a little embarrassed. People have come to our worship service for God. We're just trying to go by the Bible, and they come in here and they look around. What are these folk doing? That's 
restraint, why they ain't got no musical instrument? Ain't nobody going to get up and run around the church. Then they go out and talk about us. But we keep doing what? Worshiping because we are not ashamed. Everybody good with that? Everybody good with that? Yeah, they think we something wrong with us. We think something wrong with them. Because we just like Paul. We ain't ashamed. We don't calm down in our praise to God when a visitor walk in. Brother Bell ain't finna change his message because somebody walk in. Uh, maybe be renowned or somebody. I don't care, but Rock Obama walked in here. He gonna hear faith come by hearing. That's what he gonna hear. You must be better. I ain't finna change that. Because somebody else, now he may look at me like, man, don't fool, something wrong with them fool. I'm not ashamed. Paul had this thing we call, write this word down, boldness. What's the problem with being ashamed? When somebody accepts shame, accepts shame, they really become bold. See, when you can't shame me, it really elevates me. See, I don't change from who I am because I feel. See, shame can change your identity. Shame can have you putting yourself in a cocoon, worried about what they may say. Worried about how they may look at me. That's what shame do. I tell me my wife about all the time. I say, man, everybody a little weird anyway. It don't matter. You put the gospel with it. Then that's why it make you more bold. See, see, the gospel don't change your identity as far as who you are. What it does is it increase your boldness. It take you from being mediocre in who you are and send you on a skyrocket. Uh, 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 they, they pray for this. About these things. Look at Acts 2 and verse number 49. I mean, Acts 4 and verse 29. I'm sorry. See, when you accept it, it makes you more bold. Y'all know went to school with that kid, didn't care nothing about what nobody said about him. Y'all probably with that kid. Didn't, <laughs> didn't nobody care about what he said about him. Nobody care. That boy was coming to work with his socks on backwards every day. He came to school with his, his, his mohawk. Did not kill. Error, that's improper. This is me. I went to school, dude, that shaved his eyebrows off. Thought the dude weird as I don't know what. And he shaved them off every time. I said, man, why you shave your eyes? He said, I'm just going to be me. I don't think we need them. That's what he said. <laughs> and he wore them every day. No eyebrows. Graduation picture, just no eyebrows. I said, man, you was weird, but. <laughs> But Paul was Paul. This dude named Paul too. I said, Paul was Paul. He didn't care who nobody said about him. Man, I said, man, we get that boldness inside the church. No matter what nobody say about it, they threw the preachers in jail and asked for. They came out. They standing with the man in the hill. And the folks said, man, them folks some bold folks. We done told them folks stop preaching. Folks, them folks stop teaching the gospel. And they standing there like ain't nothing wrong. They couldn't find that wrong. They let them go. And when they went back with the people, they said, and Lord, behold a threats. Grant to thy service that with all thy boldness that they may speak thy word. They didn't care about the shame. They didn't care about what society felt like. They weren't trying to fit into society. They was to set apart. To call out, they were to sanctify. Why are they trying to fit into the world when they're trying to pull folks out of the world? Everybody go with that this morning. Write it down, write it down, write it down, write it down, write it down. Boldness is freedom from fear. Everybody got that? Boldness is freedom from fear. People, they fear shame. They fear it. No, at, at one time, you know, I, I, I wanted to go alone to get alone because I ain't want to feel shame. Everybody, everybody been there before? You just go alone to get alone. Joining this, hanging with this, doing this because you don't want to feel the shame, the embarrassment of you sitting over there by yourself when all of us over here. Now, all of y'all might not even be right, and I know y'all ain't right, but I'm going to go alone to get alone because I don't want to feel shame. 
But man, when you when you when you accept shame, it makes you more bold. You you, you have a freedom from that thing. Uh, 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 um, to to be bold to tell the world about the gospel, but also being bold to live it. To live it, brother. People have asked me, but Bill, I ain't, I ain't ashamed to tell nobody about the gospel message. I said, are you bold enough to live it, though? That's the question. Are you bold enough to live the things that Paul spoke to the Rome, the church at Rome, that he spoke to the church at Ephesus, that he spoke to the church at uh, uh, um, Corinth, that he spoke to the church at, 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 uh, at, uh, at uh, Colossae, Thessalonica? Are you good with living according to the gospel? We can tell somebody all day, you must um, um, hear the word, believe the word, confess, believe, be baptized. But are you willing, though, to keep the faith unto death, though? See, that's the thing. That oftentimes, that, like Brother, Brother, Brother Wild was saying in this class, that now we got to live it. Is it different by being proclaiming it than living it? I think it's more stress on the preacher than living. Y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know how society, when you first start, where they criticize you. And you got to keep on keeping on. I was telling one guy that wanted to start preaching, I said, now your first couple years is going to be kind of rough. Am I right? Am I right, fellas? I said, but by that fifth, sixth year, they're going to call you the preacher. But you got to be consistent and consistent. Some of our sisters, some of our brothers, they call you, you're a little preacher. Call the sisters a little preacher. You know what I'm saying? Because they're trying to live the gospel message. They're telling folks in the street about the gospel message, and they're doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it, and doing it but in their consistency, they say, well, that's just them. You got to be bold. You got to stand on that thing to hold on to that. What should be in our prayer life? God, increase our boldness to preach that word and to live that word. Everybody good with that this morning? Is there any love for the gospel? The gospel love you, but do you love it back? Is there any love for the gospel or are we a shame? Do we feel shame in spreading the message of the gospel? Do we, do we feel the shame of even living by the gospel? My next point is believing the gospel is trusting in the power of God. Believing the gospel is trusting in the power of God. See, something has to motivate us to love. There is a reason why we love. It just won't just love to love. There is reason. And when that reason comes in, we use the word power. You hear Brother Cal say that's powerful. The word powerful means that thing has gained, took in you and made now an authoritative force in your life. Why am I doing that? From the power of the gospel. Why am I living like that? The power of of the gospel is driving me. It is motivating me. It is courage. It is encouraging to me. It keeps pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. It ain't me. It's the power of the gospel. It's leading my life. I'm so consumed with I didn't pray for this thing that has on me. Y'all know I ain't start preaching like this, but something happened though. In time. Something, something happened in time when you keep letting that thing just drive you. You stop fighting against and you say, just take me. Just take me. And that thing start leading you places and putting you in places that may be uncomfortable. But you are there by reason. You say, let's go. Everybody good? Hey, y'all don't play sports. Go, go, go to the other, other folks' team, other folks' school. But they've been there rooting against you, beating on the bleachers. The brand know what I'm talking about. They've been there beating on the bleachers. You be like, man, we finna tear them up. Boldness. Boldness. I mean, we. I mean, I played little league. We went down, way down to the country, to the pasture. Man, them boys did be it'll be. We on the bus, like, oh no. We didn't lost at the bus, was the prince. We didn't lost. Finna go out there and get monkey stump off the bus. But when that shame is gone, when that shame is gone, ah uh, man, I ain't hitting on that. Let's go. When it's time to preach the word, Brother Bell hit another gill. Y'all was ain't seeing me on the streets. I hit another gill. It's time to go. I was sitting at the lady table the day, and we was talking about being in somebody's air conditioning unit. She said, I got a Bible question. I said, we'll get the air conditioning later. I said, I, I said give me your book. Out there, two hours, Brother Bray. Two hours. Yeah, I want to spend that Sunday money then. 
It's something about the power of the gospel. It drives us. Look at Matthew 10 and verse 16 through 18. When one is not ashamed of the when one is ashamed of the gospel, what they say is I don't believe in the power of it. The power of the gospel don't got me. Shame from man, it means a lot of people. It, it, it means a lot to a lot of people. And people don't understand that. I, 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 am, am I embarrassed of the gospel? I mean, I mean, I know it loved me, but do I love it back? And if we understand that shame can mold us different ways. See, see, Jesus told his disciples, he said, behold, I'm going to send you forth. I'm going to send you out there like sheep now. In the midst of what, church? Wolves. Man, I've been in for you. You going you 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 to send us well? Mr. Wolves. Now, now, I got the power for you. We, we back here. You ain't got to worry about nothing to say. Now, now, all this. He said, I'm going to send you in the midst of the wolves. Therefore, be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dude. He said, beware of men. They will deliver you to the council. They're going to scurry you in they, in they synagogues. He said, then they shall bring you before governors and kings for my sake and a testimony against them and them Gentiles. Man, when Paul stood in front of King Agrippa, governor of Ephesus, I'm going to tell y'all about Jesus. When I come to Rome, if I ever get there, believe me, I ain't ashamed of the gospel. You got to know something about me. It's an identity change. It makes you more bold. What, what, what has it done? It has taken over you. The power of the gospel. You ain't worry about the shame. What is the challenge for us inside today's church? The challenge for us, I ain't want to get in your class, but I want to jump up and tell you my whole lesson. But the challenge for us is rarely status. Where does our persecution come from? Sometimes it's come from within. We worried about worldly status. We worried about being comfortable in the world. That's why we be a part of this, join this, hang with them, do this, do this by association because we want to be comfortable with the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember when I first started this broadcast, uh, I, I called my best friend, I called my mother homeboy. I got like, I ain't got like two or three best friends. I ain't got a many friends. But I called them and I said, man, I got to tell you something. I didn't caught wind of the gospel. The gospel truth. Now, we talk about football. We talk about women. We talk about everything else. I got to tell you about this. And if I can't tell you, we can't be friends. Yeah. Went back to my fraternal, my, my fraternal organization and said, let me tell y'all something. I'm going to leave this. Because this and God don't go together. Was it uncomfortable? Oh, it was uncomfortable. Uh, some people said, man, what's wrong with him? All of my friends and all of my associates, I seem somewhat embarrassed. I shook at even telling some of them about now what the gospel power had taken on to my life. And then yet and still, I found this scripture and said, you know what? No shame. What has happened? What, what, what happened inside of us with the power of God take over? It makes us more bold. I told my mama I ain't going to that church no more. I told grandma, I got to get baptized again. I got to get baptized right. I told my folks, if y'all going to shun me, it's okay. If I got to walk with God by myself, I'm going to walk with God by myself. I ain't worried about no man-made religion. I ain't worried about being in a big place with a lot of people. I just want to be with truth. That's bold. That's bold. That's bold. That's bold. That's bold. Yeah, that's bold. That's bold. You know what had happened? And the shame had went away. Yeah, you wonder why some people can't leave? Why some people ain't came to Christ? They still feel the shame. But when they let that shame go, they be just like Paul. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God to everyone that believeth. If I trust in the gospel, I'm trusting in the power of God. Trust in the power of God. And therefore, what God is leaving me, I will go and I will take my shame and say, I'm not ashamed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody good this morning? Paul is saying, I'm not ashamed. He's saying that I'm, I don't worry about being dishonored. I don't worry about looking improper in the world. I don't worry about being embarrassed in the world. I see God's grace and I see it clearly. What happens in shame? We can't really see God's grace. 
We see, we see the world, but we can't see God's grace. When that fog goes away, when that veil of ignorance is lit, and you see God's grace, clearly something happens. Hebrews 12, and verse, number tw verse number 2. This we just follow behind Jesus. Hebrews 12, and verse number 2. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who was the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. What did he do, church? Despising the shame. Set down on the, on the right hand of the throne of God. He can see clearly. Don't matter how many times they whip him. He can see clearly. Don't matter how many times they spit on him. He can see clearly. No matter how many times they slapped him. He can see clearly. No matter how many thrones they put on his head. He can see clearly. No matter how many nails they put in his hand. He can see clearly. No matter how many nails they put in his feet. He can see clearly. No matter what kind of cross they put him on. He can see clearly the grace of God. Yeah, he, he despised the shame. What does the word despise mean? He considered the shame worthless. It was worthless being spit on. Worthless. It did nothing compared to the clear grace of God. What did the slaps do? It did nothing. It didn't stop the mission one bit. It just made it better. What did the nails in the hands do? Nothing. To stop him from clearly seeing the grace of God. And when people walk by and ridicule him. And they said he saved others. Why he can't save himself. He said father forgive him. They don't even know what they're doing. Forgive him. Despising the shame. He can see clearly the right hand of the throne of God. Man things happen horrible to our Jesus. But he's seen them things were worthless. What did I see with some relationships that want to pull me back into the world? That was a worthless relationship. My fraternal organization. A worthless relationship. It was worthless. It did nothing for the grace of God. It was all of the world. What did it do? Friends that did not want, they want me to uh, walk in the light. I deem that relationship worthless. Family members, I love them to death. But that relationship became worthless to clearly seeing God. I had decided to follow Jesus no matter what. I think Paul went through the same thing, but I can't get this from 2 Corinthians 11, verse 24 through 27. It was deemed to be worthless because the gospel was moving me. Have, have you ever felt that thing when it's time to go and talk? You feel a little nervous? Then therefore, what happened to, to, to preachers, it pushes us. When I first started preaching, um, brother bless, I used to sit there, I used to be a little nervous in my stomach. And I, I used to be like, man, I, really, I don't think I really want, want, want to go do this now. But now I take them nerve, brother Waters, and I say, let go. <laughs> let go. Yes, let go, let go, let go. We finna drop this sermon, amen? amen. Yeah, we finna run the devil clean up out of here. We finna glorify God and we finna exalt Jesus. We finna do it. We finna do it. Let's go. Everybody good with that? Everybody good with that? Everybody good with that? Well, I don't want to tell my friends because I might lose my friend. Man, let's go. Let's go. Man, oh man, they might look at us funny talking about Jesus in this time. We might lose our job. I'll get another one. If God gave me this one, he'll give me another one. Boy, I stood up at that man one day and started talking about Jesus. And boy, everybody started walking away. I kept talking. So quick, I kept talking. I ain't stopped talking. Me and Brother Cash was talking the other day, Brother Cash, I used to pass out stuff on my job. And they'll throw it in the garbage. Girl, Brother Cash said he do. He was going to pick it up out of the garbage. And put it back out there. Yes, sir. I'm ashamed. Amen. And y'all think we y'all think we supposed to feel embarrassed. You threw my stuff in the garbage. I'm going to pick it back up and tell them to print some more. Yes, sir. Paul despised the shame. Didn't care nothing about none of this stuff. What the Bible say about cash? Of the Jews. He said, of, the, of my own Jews. Five times. They whipped my back. I received that 40 strikes. I got one. 40 strikes. I got 39 strikes. Thrice was I beaten with rods. He said, they beat me with my own folks. Mm -hmm. They beat me with rods. Once I was stoned. They stoned me. Thrice I suffered they, I suffered persecution in the shipwreck. At night. Well, I was floating in the river in day and night. I have been in the deep. I've been in the deep. He's going to keep going. In journeys often. He said in journeys often. In perils, perils often. 
In perils, perils by robbers, robbers. In perils by my own my countrymen. My own countrymen. In perils by the heathen. My own them heathen. What they like me either. In perils in the city. I go to the city. They waiting on me. In perils in the wilderness. Paul went to stay. He knew that way. He went away. In perils in perils the sea. Perils of the wilderness in the sea. And in perils among false brethren. Don't think the church won't turn on you. Mm -hmm. In weariness. He said, don't think the church won't. Amen. Won't turn on you. He said, man, things happen to me physically. Mm -hmm. Weariness. And painfulness. Painfulness. And watchings. And, and watchings often. Often and hungry. Man, I've been thirst, hungry and, and thirsty. And fasting, fasting often. And cold and nakedness. I'm cool. I'm cool right there. Mm -hmm. People would look at Paul and say, man, you got to be crazy. Mm -hmm. Paul said, man, I still had a concern for the church. The gospel drove him to stay locked in as a minister of Christ. Unrequited love results in shame. Unrequited love. That means it, it, you, you, somebody love you or you love somebody and they don't love you back. Everybody, everybody best is waiting for in life, right? You know, you know you love that person. Man, I love you. They look at you like, boy, I don't like you like that. Shame of you. Shame of you. Shame of you. And sometimes I tell myself, I say, now, now I know God showed love to me through the gospel. How can I show my love back? I got to trust in the power of God. Is there any love for the gospel? My last point is this. No shame in walking by faith. There's no shame in walking by faith. When the one chooses to walk by faith, they just accept the shame. But though they are not ashamed. Everybody good with that? They accept the shame. Though they are not ashamed. I was talking to a young man one day and we were talking. He said, man, I, I don't like to walk down there. I want to give him a light of crap. I don't want to walk down there. Because, you know, it's a little embarrassing. I said, what you shame? I said, when you have that faith, you are not ashamed. I said, you, you have that boldness. I said, now, when we go out into the world, and you at your job. Therefore, there has to be a, a thing where you're going to be tested. Are you shamed? Or are you not ashamed? Yeah, I said, that's what it's going to be. I said, that, that's the easy part. I gave you like the Christ. The, the, the hard part is, is living according to Christ. In Romans chapter number 1 and verse 17, as I close, he says, for the end. I'm talking about the gospel, right? He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. He said, for it is written, the just shall live by faith. No shame. No shame, no shame, no shame. In living by faith. Everybody good with that this morning? Faith tends to rule the life. It comes very clear if you have faith or not because it will come clear if you are shamed or not. It's, 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 it's very evident when you're put in your own situations where you really are with God. I know God loved me, but it's going to come a time where you got to display that God, that you love God that's called walking by faith. That means trusting in his power in totality. All the things that may come about us. Paul would let a pen some words in Romans chapter 31 and verse 8 and verse number 31. He would pen these words. We, we never heard these words. He said, for what shall these things, what shall we say to these things? He said now, if God you got to think about this. Now, this is walking by faith. He said, now, if God, the power of God, be false, the mindset has to be, who can be against us? That's, that, that's walking by faith. When you go out there and preach the gospel and tell everybody, this is what the Bible say you must do and stand on it. You stand on it. They say, man, you pretty bold in saying that. I'm just reading what's in the word. If God be for us, who can be against us? 
Look at 2 Timothy 3 and verse 10 through 11. I love this. I love this. I love, I love this, Brother Cash. Because, man, I tell you my role model. 2 Timothy 3 and verse number 10. He says, Thou hast known my doctrine. Talking to his son in the gospel. He said, Now, look, listen to me, Timothy. I'm following Christ. You follow me. You have known uh, fully my doctrine. You know what I teach. And you know what, church, my manner of life. You know my purpose. You know my faith. You know my long suffering. You know my charity. You know my persecutions. You know my afflictions. You know me. And you know I'm going to preach the word. Amen. He said, which came to me at, at Antioch, Lyconium, and Lyconium. They stoned Paul. He said, what persecutions I endured, but out of all of them, You got to believe in the power of God. Out of all of it, I'm talking about brick by brick, whip by whip, stone by stone, imprisonment by imprisonment, God delivered me out of it all. And if I die in Christ, I'm still delivered. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, man, but but can't talk about it, man. You know, we might get shot for preaching this gospel. I say, well, they better have some bullets, Doc. We're going to preach the gospel. They might throw us in jail preaching the gospel. The church will get us out. They'll get us out. Then I might call them, leave me here on saving souls. Yeah, that's just that boldness in me. I'm going to be talking to police I was on the way to the jail. You know faith come out here. I'm going to tell them. What church you go to? That church ain't the Bible. Yeah. Bro, Bill ain't got no sense. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 as I close. What do we have to learn with? What do we have to learn this? Is? When, you, when you live by the gospel, you got to learn contentment. If, you, if you're looking for riches, you may not get it. You look, you're, looking, you're looking for uh, 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 riches, you, you, you ain't going to get it. These were some broke folk preaching the gospel. I'm just being honest. Jesus said, Fox had a hole and the birds had a net. Son of man got a place to even lay a head. But Peter, Peter said, man, silver and gold, I ain't got none of that. What I can do is give it to you in Jesus Christ. All I can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand why Why people are falling behind Christ? What are they looking for? You got to learn contentment and follow behind Christ. And the mindset has to be is that as long as I'm in Christ, I'm good. I'm good. When you read that whole, that, that whole, that whole uh, text in, in Philippians chapter 4, that's about contentment. Don't think you go and move no mountain. Grab no big bowl to stand in front of a car in Christ. Nah. -uh. It's about contentment. I'm good in Christ. Yeah. Then you can have that in contentment. All the things that we need in necessity. You say, I can do all things. Yeah. Through Christ that strengthens me. Shame will come, church. It's going to come. The question is, do we feel ashamed? Do we feel ashamed? Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel message sometimes rattle people's bones. I done seen what people have left here. They can't even drive straight. They got to they come back to the building. They got to get right with God. The message of the gospel is supposed to prick our hearts. The message of the gospel is if you die outside of Christ, you have no salvation. And when you get in Christ, you got to live in Christ because you still can die outside of Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. Being baptized many years ago and putting a plaque on your wall, but I ain't lived a day for Christ, that ain't going to do it. You have to give that life over. We sing that song, I Surrender. Because you give that life over to Christ, it's no more about me. What is the problem with the world? Selfishness. You said it, brother. Selfishness. What about me? What about God? What about me? What about Jesus? What about me? What about the Holy Spirit? What about me? What about his holy word? What about me? What about the church that Jesus established on the day of Pentecost? What has to happen with us is that you have to accept the shame. That will be shame. Especially for my young people. 
We will be going places and therefore we will want to get along to get along because they are not members of the body of Christ. No member of the body of Christ will, will encourage you to get along to get along. Go along to get along. No, 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 no. Uh, that's one of the things that I have a problem with in society. That's why sometimes I can't go along just to get along. Ain't look at me straight. I look at them straight. It don't matter. We just have two trained people, I guess. But the thing about it is that I feel no shame. And standing up for the word of God. If there be one here today, understand this. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is trying to help all. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God for salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew and to the Greek. God trying to save the whole world. He's trying to make them blend inside of the, the book of Romans. When you start reading the book, go home and read the book of Romans. I'll go read all 16 chapters. You'll figure it out. You will see how he's trying to blend and say, now listen, God has declared that Jew and Gentile, both of y'all are sinners. But there was a word called propitiation. Inside of that, he said that Jesus has become your mercy seat. You don't have to endure hardship because Jesus has done it for you. Therefore, obey his gospel. Hebrews 11 and verse 6 said, But by faith it's impossible to please him. For him that cometh to God, we believe that he is God, and he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. It's a work. People say, well, Brother Bell, we ain't saved by works, not works of the law, but by works of faith. You must confess Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You must be willing to repent. Be baptized in water. When the preachers say you don't need no water, that is perverting the gospel. When the preachers say it does not matter what church, perverting the gospel. Perverting the gospel. The Bible says, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. He that believe it not shall be down. The Bible also said we must live faithful unto death. It's a lifestyle, church. It's a lifestyle. This walking by faith means trusting in the power of God and through it, even in every situation, God would deliver us from a all. If there be one here today that needs to put on Christ in baptism, do not let the seat hold you and let loose of the shame. Let loose. Come up here boldly and say, I am not ashamed. I'm willing to give my life to Christ today and live for him every day of my life. This is about me and God. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Let us stand. I have decided to follow Jesus. Is there one here today? I have decided. Is there one here today? To follow Jesus, I have decided is there one? to follow Jesus. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Jesus, no turning back. Never come with it. I'm going to take it. No turning back. Jesus, I mean that much to me. Keep going, brother. Keep going. The world behind If there be one, understand this. It's between you and God. cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. Is it about you and God, church? By you and God. The world behind me. If everyone need to put on Christ, let us know. The cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Amen, amen. Any, any questions or anything I appreciate that? Any questions? Any questions? If not, the lesson is yours. Brothers and sisters, I'm back home. I want to thank each and every one of you, especially my sisters in Christ and my church family and my biological family. Thank you for all the prayers that you gave, all the phone calls, all the conversations that we had over the phone text messages, all of that. Thank you for praying for my mom. She's better. She's not 100, but she's better than she was. And I'm so thankful that you all prayed for her. 
And I ask that you please continue to pray for her and me. Father God, we are so grateful for the power of the gospel. Well, thankful, Father, for Brother Bell and his uh, wisdom to preach such a message today. We're well, thankful, Father, for uh, the ability for us to be in your kingdom and, and to come to your throne in prayer, asking for your mercy and your grace. Father, we're thankful for Sister Ann Massey being better. We're thankful, Father, for the love and care of a daughter and those that surround her that's being a caretaker. Father, we ask you to continue to bless as you see a stand in need, but not only that family, Father, but bless this entire family at 24th Street. Father, for we're weak and we're undone and we need you in every aspect of our lives. We just ask you to guide us, strengthen us, give us the courage, Father, not to turn back, but stay on the road to finish our course and receive our crown in life. Father, we ask this to continue to be with us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, we come to a portion of our worship service collection. Let us all give as we'll prosper. Let us give from the heart. In First Corinthians chapter eleven, in First Corinthians chapter sixteen, verses one and two, it says, "Now concerning collection for the saints, as I give unto the church of Galatia, even so do ye. From the first day of the week, I will lay by him in store, as God has prospered when we gather one at a time." Let us, let us pray. Then the Father, you bless this offering, that we use for edification, spreading of the gospel, and those who are need. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. I got a basket here to the left, a box out front. Thank you. Now we've come to a portion of worship services, which is communion. Upon every first day of the week, we're required to partake of the Lord's Supper. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 23 through 29, the Apostle Paul writes, For I received the Lord, which also I deliver unto you, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. I think giving thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do and remember me. Let's give thanks for the Lord's broken body. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Father, we come to you today with bowed heads and humble hearts. Thank you for this bread that symbolizes our son's broken body. We ask that you bless it and those who partake of it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In the same manner, took you also of the cup. I the end up saying, this cup is New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it and remember us of thee. Let us also go to God and pray for the prayer. Then, Father, we come to you once again with bowed heads and humble hearts. Thank you for this fruit of vine that's shed for that son's shed blood. We ask that you bless it and those who partake of it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you must proclaim the Lord's death until it comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup on wherever shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For whosoever eat and drink unworthily, eat and drink damnation to himself, not discern the Lord's shed blood. This concludes the communion. You know, living the life of a Christian is not easy. It's ch it's challenges. <clears throat> Recall the words of, of Jesus when he said that many times those who are of your own household will be your enemies. He said, but I didn't come to send peace. And our our de determination must be to not be ashamed of the gospel, but to live it, to put it to practice in our lives because of our love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Brother, Brother Bell, for that message. Is there any love for the gospel? Let's be remind, mindful of, uh, of those around us who are, are, are struggling in need of prayers. A uh, special request has been made on behalf of Sister Tiffany Blair. She's not feeling well. Who would keep her in your prayers. Uh, also, um, 
been asked to announce that uh, the early bird registration for the ladies' lectureship retreat is uh, it, it, it ends at on October the 31st. That's the early registration of it. Um, and so for, if you have uh, interest in attending the, the ladies' uh, lectureship retreat, please see Sister Serena and uh, get the details on that so you can get registered for that uh, as, as that date draws closer. Nothing else, we'll all stand and we'll, uh, we'll sing a final selection and be dismissed. There's a happy land of promise over in the Arabi, where the saved on earth shall soon the glory share, where the souls of men shall enter and live on forever. And everybody will be happy over there. And everybody will be happy, will be so happy over there. You know that we will shout and sing his praises everybody will be happy over there let us pray the calendar heaven the father that sits high and looks down low we come to you this day with bow heads and humble hearts just giving thanks to heavenly father thank you for that wonderful opportunity to be able to come out and hear study and learn a portion of your holy and divine word heavenly father we want to give a thanks to Brother Bell, for that wonderful message that he brought out to us, Heavenly Father, that we might be able to take it inside of us and take it out and teach the world the word we need to know, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time just saying thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for just being so good and so kind. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each and every one of us until we meet again. In these names, we ask in Jesus' name I pray, amen.